Okay, so I'm just sitting here reminiscing on like all the stuff that I've like done, I guess, or whatever. And people wonder, like guys wonder why I am the way that I am when it comes to like dating and stuff or whatever. And I mean, I gotta say I, I'm um, what do you want to call it? Like bitter or nothing like that. By the way, I got on not zoom on my face, so yeah. But yeah, I'm not gonna say I'm bitter because I don't think I'm bitter. You know, I'm open to you know what I'm saying dating and all of that. But I'm 21 years old and I'm at a certain level that I can't just be dealing with no bullshit. But at any rate, I'm just sitting here um, thinking about like um, all like my past relationship relationships or whatever, and I'm just thinking like, all right. Um, first little boyfriend I had or whatever, you know what I'm saying, he lived on Pearson and, you know, he was like, you know what I'm saying, a real bad boy or whatever. Um, he was like the, the boy that all, a lot of girls in the neighborhood wanted and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it took him a long time, like, when we met, I think I was in maybe eighth grade or whatever, and we didn't have sex until I got to 10th grade, but we had, like, like he'd been, you know, obviously, he was older than me. He was, like, two or three years older than me, and he had already dropped out of high school. Like, he was, you know what I'm saying, been in jail and all that already. But, um, yeah, so, um, when I got to 10th grade, you know, we had sex or whatever the case was, and, you know, he definitely put me up on a lot of shit, like, when it comes to niggas in general, like, he put me on a lot of shit or whatever. And that was cool, you know. He was cool, whatever, whatever. Um, don't know where he's at right now or whatever. But, you know, that was my nigga or whatever. But a more so real situation, like, my first real, I guess, relationship or whatever, I was, I think, a junior in high school. Yeah, I was a junior. And I was dating this guy when this is when I lived on school craft. And I was dating this guy that lived down the street from me. He was like 23 or something like that. This one, the fucking $2 Tuesdays at the Tropical Hut was popping, like popping. And anyway, I had night school. And at the time, I didn't have a car yet. And I used to go to school in Southfield on like 10 Mile of Evergreen. Or, no, not 10 Mile. That's where it's like, what, 8, 9, between 8 and 9 Mile on Evergreen. And I lived on Schoolcraft and um, Myers. I used to catch, and I had night school. So I went from school from 7 a.m. to damn near 7 p.m. I used to catch the bus from night school all the way to Schoolcraft and be rushing so I can cook din him dinner and stuff like that and take it down street to his house and stuff like that. And I was really just so geek. You know what I'm saying? That I was dating him and, you know, whatever. The nigga wasn't shit. He ain't had no fucking job. He had this raggedy ass car or whatever. But I was a hood rat. I ain't even gonna lie. I was, you know, a hood rat, basically. So I was like, you know, ooh, this nigga right here, you know? So I used to rush home from night school to, like, cook him dinner like not just no fried chicken and fries like cook him dinner like cabbage chicken cornbread shit like that because he was a hood rat his fucking self like his mama was a fucking rat his sisters were fucking rats his little sisters was cool but his sisters that was like around my age at the time or whatever they was fucking rats and they used to be like going up to the fucking roller rink uh what's that School craft, skate rink, Detroit roller wheels. They used to be going up there every fucking weekend getting some fights. <laughs> like, they were some fucking rats. And, um, he was a rat, too, with his bummy ass. Like, and he smoked cigarettes. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was so, you know what I'm saying, trying to be, like, that girl. Like, I thought we really was going to go somewhere. Like, I was just trying to be that girl. I used to cook him dinner. You know, I used to um, get him money. I was fucking dumb as hell. <laughs> I was dumb as hell because I used to be like, he like, oh, baby, give me some money so I can go to $2 Tuesdays. And I'd be like, oh, all right, here goes $20. <laughs> I was dumb as hell, but, you know, it was cool. It was a learning experience or whatever. 
But um, I remember this one particular time where I was like, I was in Southfield. Um, this is when my dad lived in Southfield or whatever at one point. So I was in fucking Southfield, um, fucking 12 mile at Northwestern Highway. If you guys know where that's at. And I caught the bus in February in Michigan. First of all, <laughs> caught the bus in February to Schoolcraft and Myers. But this nigga's not to fucking be home. <laughs> Oh my god, you first because I was sneaking to spend the night at his house, first of all. Second of all, he didn't have a fucking cell phone or no house phone. So I had no way to even call him let him know that I was on my way. But we had already planned that I was gonna come spend the night at his house, you know what I'm saying, the day before. So I told him around what time I was coming and all this kind of stuff. So he knew. So I didn't call the damn smart bus to Northland, cost the fucking Buses from Northland to Schoolcraft and junk. But this to get to the house and the nigga not be there. Like, you don't understand how pissed I was. It was fucking cold as hell. And you know, me being a high ass, I was trying to dress all cute. So I'm freezing. This nigga was not fucking home. Like, that shit, I was so pissed off. And it was like maybe 7 or 8 o'clock at night. So you know the smart buses probably ain't running. It was the weekend. I was so upset, so I left, I wrote, I went to the store, right down to Crap and Myers, and um, wrote a note, like got some paper and stuff and wrote a note, so he would know that I fucking came, I wrote the note, went back to the house, put it on the door, waited for the bus, the school crab bus, which that bitch hardly ever run, get on the bus, this nigga get the call on my cell phone, tell him some get off the bus and come back, because at this point he ain't had no car. I forgot what, I think he had gotten into like an accident or something like that, but he had a car no more. So he's gonna call my cell phone and be like, get off the bus and come back. Man, I'm like, I'm already on the bus, but I was only at like school crap and um, Schaefer or something like that. But still, but you know, I got my black ass off the bus and we met, you know what I'm saying, between my and Schaefer. But anyway, that was a, you know what I'm saying, crazy relationship or whatever. Um. Then I had a, a guy that I was kicking in with that I tweeted about or whatever where, you know what I'm saying, we was kicking and he was cool. I was um like 18, I think. He was, I was, it was my senior year of high school, so I was 17 actually. And um he was from Plymouth or whatever. And I lived on Joy Road. And um yeah, my mama liked him. Like my mom used to let the niggas spend the night. All types of stuff or whatever. She wasn't tripping when he spent the night. He'd be in my room, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't ever tripping or whatever. My mama wanted the mamas like the girl at the ATL, which they'd be like, your mama ain't never home. But, yeah, she was she was cool. So he used to spend the night or whatever. So, I don't know. His dad actually saw me, and the, that's the crazy way we met. His dad saw me. His dad was like, "How old are you?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm uh, 17." He's like, "I want I want you to talk to my son. I want my I want you and my son to talk." So I'm like, uh, "Okay." So he was like, "What's your name and number?" So I gave this old ass man my name and number, and he gave it to his son, and then his son turned out to be this nigga, and we just started talking from there. And so, um, yeah, so the nigga was cold. Nigga was looked good, whatever. You know, he was fresh, you know what I'm saying? At that age, at that particular point in my life, I was like, you know what I'm saying, trying to date the, that that nigga. Like, I was on some shit. Like, I wanted the nigga with the new L sign. I wanted the nigga with the Cardi's. Like, I was on that type of hair rat shit. And um, he, he was that nigga. I mean, he had this cold-ass Monte Carlo, and that's the reason I even fell in love with Monte Carlo had the coldest Monte Carlo at that time because, you know, yeah, he had the coldest Monte Carlo at the time. It was all black, black tinted windows, leather seats, it was an SS, it was an 06, and then the year was, I think, like, no, it was like, that, I was 17, so it was an 07. He had an 06 Monte Carlo, but it was 2007. But to even all that aside, like, niggas was cold, niggas was crispy, and I was like, all right, so we got to talking. Or whatever, and um, he got finally, you know, he did his thing. You know, he was a street nigga or somewhat of a street nigga. He wasn't really popping off like that, but you know what I'm saying? He had his little shit going. And so, one particular night, I remember, you know, the nigga, um, what happened? 
something happened and he was like, you know, so shit, basically, you know, not to put everything, you know what I'm saying, all over the internet, but at one point, you know, some shit happened and I was just down for whatever, basically, like, if y'all only knew, I was down for whatever and we was just talking about this because nigga in prison now and he, he probably won't be getting out for like another couple of years and he's been in there since, shit, I don't know, 2008, 2009. But, um, yeah, so he, um, we were just talking and shit, and he was like, dang, you remember that one time, you know what I'm saying, you, you know what I'm saying, held a nigga down and this and that. So I'm like, damn, I forgot all about that, because I did. I was like, what the fuck is, he, what was I thinking? Like, I was really, you know what I'm saying, about to go to jail or something for the shit that I was doing with this nigga. Like, I could have went to prison or something. It was crazy or whatever, but I, you know what I'm saying, I don't know. I have those qualities in me. I have, if my nigga need me, I'm going to be there, period. I don't, you know what I'm saying, consider myself like, you know, like as at the point I'm at my, in my life right now, I'm not hood. Like, I, I don't live in the hood, you know what I'm saying. I don't want to fuck with a hood nigga. But at the same time, it's still in me. I can't help who I am. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm, a, I'm, I'm 21 years old. I don't have no kids. I have a, you know what I'm saying, a good job. I have my own crib. Like, I have so much growth for myself that I couldn't even put myself in a situation to be dating a hood nigga. Or at least, if I'm a date a hood nigga, it's not going to be no fucking $5 bag of weed nigga. Okay. But at any rate, I don't want to date a hood nigga. I want to date a guy who, you know what I'm saying, is on his shit just like I am. Got good credit just like I do. Got his own house, you know what I'm saying, or apartment or whatever, like I do. Um, so I'm just thinking like, damn, it's so crazy because all these niggas, you know what I'm saying, they all want a girl that's down for them, you know what I'm saying, that's gonna hold them down and some shit pop off or whatever but then when they do have it or when they get it you know it's like they don't know what to fucking do really and it's it's crazy and it bothers me it don't bother me i guess it's just crazy that niggas say they want this thing just like they say females say they want this thing then when they get it they don't know how to you know i'm saying handle it but niggas do the same thing when they get a female that's down for them you know what I'm saying, willing to do whatever, make sure they on their shit, because I just had several niggas, and th- and that's my problem, you know, that my, even my friend says my problem is, I tend to find niggas who not on their shit, or not on the level I, I'm on, and I try to upgrade them, which is a problem, like, I find a nigga without a job, and I'd be like, alright, come on, baby, let's, I'm about to help you find a job, let me get your resume together, like, I shouldn't have to do that. The nigga I fuck with got to be a nigga that's on my level or above my level. And if he's above my level, then he need to be the type of nigga that's going to be like, all right, baby, I see you right here. I see the direction you're going in. Um, I'm about to help you out. Let's see what we can do to get you on, I mean, get you on the shit that I'm on. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Niggas weren't raised like I was. Females wasn't raised like I was. They don't know the struggle. They don't know about the hustle. Shit. I mean... They, you know, did this, they did that, but really, when it comes down to it, you know what I'm saying, niggas ain't bought it for real. They ain't bought that life at all. Um, so yeah, it's about 14 minutes. I hope this shit upload. Hit me up. Um, but yeah, deuces.